Okay. Let's discuss how I got here. My parents met in 1966. This is my lawnmower. It's 18 years old now and getting ready to vote in its first election. And in typical Honda quality, it has never failed to start on the first pull. Regardless of how little I change the air filter, how infrequently I change the oil, or all of the other abuse it's had to suffer and endure in the 18 years that I and my daughter have been using it. And in spite of all that, it's also a giant piece of shit. It has the audacity to have a case of the shakes because I bent the crankshaft by driving at full speed into a tree stump. When something like this happens to a tool that's been part of the family for, well, longer than my daughter's been part of my family, you go through the seven stages of grief. Although I think men tend to condense those seven stages of grief into three. And I refer to them, I think of them as the three R's. It begins with rage, followed by regret, followed by repair or replacement. I've gotten most of the rage out of the way. And so now we're at the choice of what to do. And there's really three options in this case. Number one, you can continue to be mad at this inanimate object for driving itself into a tree stump and breaking and just say, well, you're going to get what you deserve and I'll throw you in a junk pile and you can sit in a junkyard for the next 20 years and think about what you've done and replace it with a brand new mower. So, you know, you drop $800,000 on a brand new mower that'll last another 20 years. And at my age, that's a retirement mower, right? That thing's going to outlast me. So this would be a good time to say to the wife, I'm going to the mower store and we're going to bring a new one home. And who doesn't like a new lawnmower? I mean, what haven't they improved in the last 20 years for a thing that is nothing more than an engine, four wheels, and a blade that goes in a circle, right? So in spite of the marketing hype and in spite of the fact that lawnmowers have nearly doubled in price, I'm not really sure they cut the grass that much better. So now we're down to repair. And there's really two options. For a bent crankshaft, the right thing to do, and we all know it. Pull the engine off of that mower, split the case, replace the crankshaft with a new one, replace any of the other worn parts that have, you know, worn themselves down normally over 18 years, put it back together, and have a mower that's ready to do another 20 years of service in the yard. Or we can do what I learned living on an old-timey farm surrounded by old-timey farmers when I was a kid which is find a decent sized piece of pipe that's laying in your scrap pile, pop the blade off that sucker, put the pipe on the end of it, and grunt, groan, piss, moan, bitch, swear, and bend it until you get it mostly straight and the shakes are reduced to the point where your hands don't go numb in the first 10 minutes of mowing the lawn. And so that, of course, is what we're going to attempt to do today. There's a couple of ways this can go, but I have a plan, and it's a good plan. Back in the early 2000s, in the dot-com boom, South Park did a now famous episode uh, about underpants gnomes. The underpants gnomes had a business plan much like most of the dot-com companies of that era with three stages to get rich. Stage one, collect underpants. Stage two, uh, stage three, profit. And I have a plan that's just as good for how we're going to fix this lawnmower. You see, I live in New England, and so most of the videos you watch on how to do this are pretty simple. You zip off the blades, you pull off the blade carrier, you get to the bare end of the crankshaft, you put your pipe on it, give it a tug, give it a nudge, give it a bend, get it mostly straight, put it all back together, and you're on your way in about 30 or 45 minutes. But my three-step plan, because of the way things work in New England, is in step one, prepare the mower, disassemble the blade. Figure that's about five, 10 minutes if I take my time. Step two is the one where it's all gonna go off the rails. Because here in New England, that blade carrier on the end of that shaft has been sitting there through humid summers and freezing cold winters, neglected and without antices, I bet, for over 18 years. And I am certain it is not coming off without a fight. All right. We are going to pull the spark plug wire. We're actually going to take the plug out of this one, mostly because 
I want to spin the engine over and not have any compression. So that way we can see how out of round this crankshaft actually is. It actually doesn't really seem like it's that bad at the moment. Now the fun part. If I give this thing a tug, the lawnmower I mean, that blade should spin in a nice concentric circle. Let's see. Ugh. This thing should go around as in a circle, not as in a wobble. Time to zip these blades off. And with all the grass on them, at least let me scrape a couple of flats on this thing clean. So I can maybe get a socket on there reasonably. I don't remember what size it is. Let's say uh, 14, which probably means it's gonna be a 13, 14. Well, that was easier than I expected it to be. Look at that. Same nut size, same nut size. Promising so far. It's the point in normal videos where somebody just reaches this and gives it a tug and it it comes out perfectly easy, just like this, and it fucking it slides right. <laughs> yeah, no, not gonna happen. Can I get a three-jaw pull around this thing? Huh? 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 Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be ugly. Yeah, no, I need a two-jaw puller because it's... So, roadblock number one. I don't have a two-jaw puller big enough. The question is, do we make one? Or do we buy one? All right, that was a fun jaunt. So my other option, I thought, was to smack the sh** out of this with a slide hammer. And uh, let's not pretend that that's not still an option. But right here, we're going to have to borrow this screw. And, uh, oh, good lord, these are tight. Okay. Somebody was angry in a factory this day. All right, let's see. What size is this thing? Uh, 12 maybe? Nope. 13? Yep. All right. Let's see if I can loosen these jaws up. <clears throat> now I can actually get this thing on. There we go. Now, what are the chances that this is not going to just fly the f off? <clears throat> Let's see. I could hit that with an impact, but that is probably a bad idea. So what do you want to guess? Let's see. 
What is that? 17 millimeter? My eye's gonna work? Nope. Uh, 22. 20 millimeter? Nope. It's one of those days, folks. Uh huh. Well, there's only one left, so. What do you think? No f way. Harbor Freight. Did they sell these for the U.S. market? Are those like SAE sized? No, they're just sloppy. All right, we're going to we're going to pretend that's a 19 millimeter. <laughs> Something's doing something. Oh. Jesus. Should come right off with oh fuck it Ugh. you know just the way it works in everybody else's youtube videos good lord all right now we're close there we go that's a little bit more Good lord. Oh, the fun part's gonna get this back on. I should have put the impact on it. No, don't worry. I have replacement blades. Now we're out of screw again. Oh, Jesus. All right. Do I have enough screw left? Now I only got one or two threads. Well, that's got it most of the way off. All right, let me see if I have a longer screw I can put in there. All right, over here in Hardwareville. Let's see what size is this thing. It's a fine thread M10 by one. What are the odds I have an M10 by one long here? Uh, it's probably coarse. M8, M10 by one, 0.5. So I don't have a longer version there. Let me check one more thing. 
I do have this odd size container. M8, 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 M6 by one, M8, 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 M6. No M10s, just M6s, M7s, fine. So, we're kind of screwed. Seems then, we're gonna have to go to plan B, which is we're not gonna be able to pull it off. We're gonna have to hammer it off. Slide hammer bits. And maybe, maybe that'll work. Oh, this is never gonna work. This is. <sighs> Hey, dum-dum. Not you, my audience members. You're smart. The dog is dum-dum. Hey, come on. The dog is chasing chipmunks that live in my little stone wall around here. And they constantly frustrate the f out of her because they won't come out and play. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's gonna work. No, it's not going to stay on. It's not going to stay on. I'm going to have to put the friggin' axle plate on this thing, aren't I? Try one more. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Son of a bitch. All right, let's do this a different way. Guess what? All we've done at this point now is bend the blade carrier, which I don't think I ordered another one of. Should come right off. No problem. Just a little more. One more. Two more. Three more. No worries. Just one good whack. One more. One good whack. And we're good. Ready? There we go. That's it. There you go. That's... Come on. Oh, brother. We're close. Is it worth it? Probably gonna, I, there's probably not a single bearing left in this engine by the time I'm done pulling this thing off. I'm gonna have to replace the crank anyway. It's moved. Or something. Like I said, part two of this plan was a little sketchy. I mean, 
I'm sitting next to my oxyacetylene torch, so it's going to come off one way or another. The question is, is it going to be liquid or not? All right, I'm just gonna breathe heavy for a little while. The good news is, the shaft appears to be keyed. The bad news is, I didn't see the key come out, did you? Hammering on this and pulling on this end We've now warped this so much that the blades won't sit on it correctly. In which case, I gotta go order a new one of these. 